Will you pay gift tax on your gifts to another person? That's what we're going to talk about here today on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, my friends. We're going to talk about gift tax, what you need to know, and how you can use this if you're looking at gifting money or even if you're a recipient of a gift from another human being. So we're going to human being to human being, not human being to a charity. We can maybe uh, sidetrack that one for a different episode. Human being to human being, is it tax? That's what we're going to talk about here today. So welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, my friends, the place where you come to learn about gift tax. And everything else financial planning related, everything on the sun when it comes to financial planning. So don't forget to subscribe right now and there. And once you subscribe, hit the bell to be up. up. Well, actually, I'm not sure where the bell is. Is it down there? I think it's down next to the subscribe little bot button there to be notified for future content. So we do about, uh, well, I'll tell you, maybe even two episodes a day now. Because I enjoy it. It's fun. All right. So let's talk about gift tax. Um, well, a couple of things. I get this question all the time. I'm very active on Quora, and this is why it prompt me to do this one here today, is I, I get probably, I don't know, once a, every couple uh, couple times a month, if I do this as a gift tax or I receive this from grandma, is it subject to gift tax? And the answer is no. It's just not subject to gift tax, especially on the new tax law, TCGA, Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017. So let me go dive into this. There's two types of gifting, all right? Two types. You've got to understand these two. There's one that's called an annual exclusion gift, an annual exclusion. That's how much you can gift without filing a federal tax gift tax return. Now, don't get caught up and say a gift tax return. That sounds like a nightmare. It's not. It's this form right here, and I'll dive into a little bit here in a second behind me. IRS form 709, and see where that nine is? See how the circle's up top, 709? If you take a line underneath the circle there and you do 706, then the six is down below. The six is the death tax, inheritance tax, estate tax. Oh, not inheritance. Yeah, well, I guess it would be estate tax, essentially. There's no inheritance tax for the feds. But anyway, 706 is your, is your estate tax return. 709 is your gift tax return. Nine is alive. Six is dead, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, so you got to file this for it's just one page, literally it's, it's the simplest thing in the world. Now that's, but let me go back to annual exclusion. If you give less than $15,000 in any calendar year, you don't even need to find a file of 709. It's completely free of any taxation and any reporting whatsoever. You can literally stroke me a check for $15,000 today and not file anything, not pay tax on anything and nothing. As a recipient, I don't pay taxes. I don't file anything, nothing. Now, that's for the feds. Each state has its own little rules and regulations. The vast majority of states don't have anything on like that either, uh, but we'll talk about that in a different episode. But anyway, from the feds' perspective, you stroke me a check for $15,000 today, and you should. You should. Uh, it's not subject to any reporting, not subject to any taxes whatsoever. If you're married and your spouse strokes me a check for $15,000 today, and she should or he should, that's not subject to reporting, 709. That's not subject to taxes, nothing. As a recipient, it's not subject anyway. So I get that $30,000 completely free of any taxation and free of any reporting mechanism to the feds, as do you. Now, if you say, Josh, let's say you're single, you're a great guy, I'm going to give you $25,000. All right, now that would be subject to IRS 709. You're supposed to file a gift tax form. You don't have to pay tax on it. I don't have to pay tax on it, but that goes above your annual exclusion. So the annual exclusion is rule number one, 15,000 or below under turn rent or current numbers is not subject to filing, not subject to anything. Anything above 15,000 is subject to being filed, but it's not subject to taxation. That goes into your lifetime exemption. So annual exclusion, you could give 8 million people $15,000 a piece, and not any of that is subject to taxation or reporting. Once you break the 15,000 though, now you're dipped into what's called your lifetime exclusion. That's an exemption amount you have over the course of your life. And what the 709 does, it keeps a tally, a running tally of all your annual or your life, of all the amount you've given that can slowly take away from your lifetime exemption, which in today's numbers is over $11 million per person. So you could give me $11 million today, and you should. And your wife could give me $11 million today, and she should. $22 million bucks, not subject to taxation to you, not subject to taxation to me. We do, not we, you do have to file 709 gift tax return, all right? 
I mean, that's literally that simple. So annual exclusion, how much you can give each year without being reported, and none of this is taxable. Your lifetime exclusion, lifetime exemption amount is over $11 million per social security number. How much you can give over the course of your life without being subject to gift tax, now you still have to file a form. So I get this all the time. I don't know who would do this, but let's just say you give me $12 million today. Um, or I mean, 11 million, let's say you give me uh yeah, $11 million, let's, let's say $12 million today. Um, we'll say, and then you, so what you do is you subtract the 12 million from the 11 point, I think it's one five, eight or something like that. And that, that 900,000 or so is subject to gift tax. All right. So we would have to pay some, you would have to pay some gift tax on that. Now the next year you can still go and you've exhausted your entire lifetime exemption at that point. Now next year you can still go give me 15,000 bucks. That is still free of any taxation. That is still free and clear of happening reported. So remember, you always have the $15,000 each and every year per beneficiary, per social security number. Um, without, it doesn't matter how much you give. I mean, if Jeff Bezos said today, Josh, I'm going to give you $50 million. A part of that $50 million would be subject to tax. And then he can say, Josh, next year I'm going to give you another 15000 That won't be subject to tax. So you can say, Josh, you're such a great guy. I'm also going to give your wife 15000 That's not subject to tax. The minute he goes over that 15,000 threshold, the amount above that 15,000 would be subject to tax, gift tax, because he's already eaten up his entirety of his lifetime exemption amount. I hope that makes sense. So just remember the two forms, annual exclusion, and that's what most people deal with. If I give $7,000 today, what do I have to do? Nothing, literally nothing. If I give $17,000 a day, what do I have to do? You don't pay tax, you got to file out the 709. That's it, literally that's it. And they just keep a running tally so that way once you break the 11.158 million or whatever it is, something like that, the IRS will know to start taxing you at that point. All right, so now, what if I what if grandma gives me $28,000 today? No, I was going to say 50000 for simplicity. Grandma, she, you know, she gives me 50000 bucks. Do I have to pay tax? Nope. Does she have to pay tax? Nope, not unless she's already given over 11 point, you know, something over $11 million. Nope, but she would need to file a 709. All right, so a bit of caution here. A lot of people don't file these 709s, especially if you're doing some estate planning with life insurance. It was called irrevocable life insurance trust. Not going to get into that here today, but a lot of people don't do that. And that they're holding themselves out to be uh, to have their estate challenged when they die. All right. Because what you do with a life insurance trust is you actually you're you're, you're holding life insurance as you are the insured. But the trust actually owns the policies so that way when you die the amount of the life insurance pays out tax-free to your heirs. It's, it's a pretty good mechanism to, to create an estate, actually. But there is a separate trust, a separate taxable entity. And that is the trust literally owns the life insurance on you. Now, you are giving money to the trust so the trust can pay for your life insurance premiums. I mean, it's a, it's a great mechanism. One of these days, I'll do a video on how eyelets work. I'm just not going to do it today. But what happens is because you're giving money and if the money that you're giving goes above and beyond the annual exclusion amount, you're supposed to be reporting that with the 709 or your life, the eyelet is, the life insurance trust is supposed to be reporting. No, I guess you would be, yeah, because you're the donor. So what happens is if you're not doing that, the IRS at your death can say, hey, I see you have this $8 million life insurance trust. I don't see any receipt, uh, receipts that you were, you, now you're deceased, we're giving money to it to fund the premium. So we're going to consider that as a taxable gift. And we're going to say this life insurance amount, this $8 million is taxable to the heirs. A lot going on with that. But just remember, if you're using gifts and in life insurance and estate planning, uh, you really, really, really need to be filing a 709. If you're just doing gifts to little George, uh, you don't need to do anything. It's just you don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. And if you're the recipient of a gift, you don't need to do anything anyway. The recipients are completely null and void here. All right. So if you like what you see here, don't forget to uh, subscribe down below. Thumbs up are always helpful for sure. I love thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. You know, like my shirt. Subscribe. Don't forget to do that. And then comments, comments, comments. Share the video. I tell you, if any of these things come down the pike and you like it, share with somebody else, please. The more eyes on the YouTube channel, the more YouTube actually puts out there for other people to see. Now, obviously, if it's not helping you, well, don't sweat it. And then uh, don't forget to put comments. Lastly, go to heritagewealthplanning.com. Heritagewealthplanning.com is so where you can get all the stuff on there. Videos, podcasts, blog posts, the whole thing. And you'll get a pop-up as well for my free book. You get the uh, PDF version of my free book, The Tax Bomb in Your Retirement Accounts, and how the Roth can help you avoid it. See you next time. Thanks, guys.